Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to Percent as a Ratio. We are getting very close to being done our unit on proportions, uh, and ratio and proportion. Um, our goal today is I know what percent means, and I can use proportion to solve percentage calculations. Now, we're not just going to use proportion. I'm going to show you a couple different methods to solve. You can pick your favorite method and go from there. Now, first of all, what the heck is percent anyway? So two students take a test on the same topic with different teachers. One student gets 30 out of 32, the other gets 24 out of 25. Who did better on that topic? Um, now, this is the old school of doing tests. We're not talking about levels here. This is actual percent. What percentage of the questions did they get right? Well, it's kind of hard to compare who did better when one is out of 32 and one is out of 25. They both look like they did pretty well. So it's hard to compare if they're not out of the same thing. So we're going to change it to make them both out of 100. This is called percent. And that literally means out of 100. Per means out of and cent means a hundred. There are a hundred cents in a dollar, so per cent means out of a hundred. So anytime you take a situation and change it to be out of a hundred, you're dealing with percent. So we're going to do that in two different ways. We're, we're going to change a fraction to a percent, and I'm going to deal with these two fractions, the ones that were in our question. This person got 30 questions right out of a total of 32 questions, so their fraction is 30 out of 32. And this person got 24 questions correct out of a possible 25 questions. So their fraction is 24 out of 25. And so we're going to try and see who actually did better on this test. So here's the first way we're going to do it. We're going to set up a proportion. I want to change 30 over 32 into something out of 100. So I set up my proportion, I say 30 over 32 equals something out of 100. I don't know what it is, so I'm giving it an, an x. And now I can do whatever method I wanted before. Now there's no easy way to get from 32 to 100 in a multiplication question. So there's no easy way to multiply 30 to get my x. So probably one of our algebraic solutions will work. So let's try cross multiplying. Let's go 32 times x. That's going to give us 32x. And then when we go the other direction, 30 times 100 gives us 3,000. And now to get our answer, we divide by 32 on both sides. And when we divide by 32 on both sides, the 32s are gone on this side. And on this side, we have 3,000 divided by 32 which is 93.75. So x equals 93.75. So this person got 93.75%. Now, the next method, and I kind of like this one better than setting up the ratio, but um, but you can choose whichever one you want. This method is divide and times by 100%. So we're going to first take 24 over 25 and change it into a decimal. And we talked about that when we first started working with fractions. I'm going to take 23 and divide it by 25. And that gives me 0.92. So 0.92. Now that's as a decimal. To get it into a percent, we have to times it by 100%. So 0 0.92 times 100%. Remember when you multiply by 100, all you're really doing is moving the decimal point two places over. So what this turns into is 92. And don't forget that percent sign because we multiply by 100%. So it's actually 92%. So who did better? The person who got 30 out of 32 did better than the person who got 24 out of 25. Now I'm just going to pull this rule over here. The rule for working in this particular um, manner is to divide the top by the bottom, then multiply by 100%. Move the decimal place two places left and don't forget that percent sign, which is basically what I said. Okay, changing a percent to a decimal. 
this is really easy. So I hope um, that everybody can actually remember this, but we're going to go over it anyway. The rule here is divide by 100. When you change a percent to a decimal, um, this is actually 14%, remember, is really 14 out of 100. And we know how to change fractions to decimals. We just multiply or divide the top by the bottom. And when you divide by 100, you're just moving the decimal place over. So this becomes 0 0.14. So we just have to divide by 100. Now this one would change to 4 over 100. And if I do 4 divided by 100, I get 0 0.04. Now we could get the same thing if I just typed into the calculator 4 divided by 100. I hope you don't have to type it into the calculator, but you could just do 4 divided by 100 and you get 0 0.04. Now this one over here, 104 over 100. Remember that's what percent means. This means out of 100. And so I write 104 out of 100. And notice that this 104 is bigger than 100, which means that we're going to have a whole number when we change it into a decimal. Uh, this is going to be 1.04. And if you can't divide by 100 in your head, I hope that's not the case, but if you can't, you do have the calculator so you can do 104 divided by 100 and see that you get 1.04. Now, finding the percent of a number using ratios. So we're going to find the percent of a number. If I say what is 10% of 45, we're going to set up a proportion here. I'm going to set up a ratio of 10 out of 100. That's what 10% means. That's what this translates to, is 10 out of 100. Now I'm going to set that equal to something that's out of 45. Now I don't know what that something is, so let's call it x. And now you can solve this however you want. If you want to find your multiplication factor, um, if you want to take a look and say, what do I have to do? I want to go from 45 to x. So what did I have to do to get from 100 to 10? Well, to get from 100 to 10, I had to divide by uh, 10. So I have to divide by 10 over here. So x is going to equal 45 divided by 10, which is 4.5. So 10% of 45 is 4.5. Now I'm just going to double check that on here. If I double check it, when I do 4.5 divided by 45, I should get 0.1 which is the decimal equivalent of 10%. And I do, look, it's 0.1. Okay, what is 63% of 230? Well, 63% means 63 over 100. Now, of 230, I have to figure out what goes on top of 230. Now this one, there's no easy way to figure out what I did to 100 to get to 63. So this time I'm going to use cross multiplying. I'm going to do 100 times x gives me 100x. And that is going to be equal to 230 times 63. So 230 times 63 is 14490. And now I divide both sides by 100 to get rid of the 100 in front of the x. And I'm left with x equals 144.90. Just move the decimal place back two places when you divide by 100. So 63% of 230 is 144.9. Now, does that make sense to us? Um, Think about 50% here. 50% is less than what I'm looking at. And 50% of 230, we know that 50% is half. So we're going to use some estimation skills. So half of 230 would be 115. So would it make sense that 63% is 144? Yep, I think we're getting there. Now, this way is actually even easier. It says finding the percent of a number by remembering there should be an ing on the end of there, by remembering 
that of in math means multiply. So what is 10% of 45? Now we're doing the same thing that we did up here. These are the same questions. I'm just going to do them slightly different. 10% of 45. First thing, we have to change this into a decimal. So change to decimal. And then you have to remember that of means to multiply. And so when I change that, I'm going to change this to a decimal, which is 0.1 times 45. And if you plug that into your calculator, 0.1 times 45, you get 4.5, which is the same answer we got before. Now the same thing over here, remember, change this into a decimal. We maybe should, <clears throat> we maybe should have that point there as well. So 0 0.63 is that as a decimal. Of means multiply by 230. And punch into your calculator, 0 0.63 times 230 is 144.9, which is what we got before. Same answer as we did up here. Same answer as we did up here. Um, so you can choose whichever method you want. It doesn't matter to me. The yearbook committee conducted a survey to find out how many students in a school had a cell phone. Of the 63 students they surveyed, they found 83% said they had a cell phone. So 83% of the 63 students surveyed had a cell phone. So we're going to set up a ratio method by saying 83 over 100 was equal to something out of 63. We want to find out how many students were carrying a cell phone. So we give it a cross. 100 times x is 100x and that's going to equal 63 times 83. 63 times 83 is 5229. 5229. And now to get the x by itself, we divide both sides by 100. And we get x equals 52.29. Now we're going to use the of method. Remember, 83% of 63. So 83% of 63 means we change this into a decimal, 0 0.83 of 63. Remember of means multiply and we plug that into the calculator. 0.83 times 63 is 52.29. So it says 52.29 which is we can't have 0.29 of a student so that must mean that 52 students said they had a cell phone. Okay, a couple more examples here. Um, really practical examples. A pair of jeans you've been waiting for goes on sale for 25% off. How much will you have to pay if they were $75.99 originally? Well, uh, we need to calculate the discount. The discount is 25% off. So the discount is 25% of the, the original price. Okay, so 25% of the original price. I'm going to use the of method here. If you want, you could set up a ratio, but I'm going to go 0 0.25 of 75.99. So let's pull up the calculator. 0 0.25 times 75.99. That's uh, $19. I rounded that in case you were wondering. This 7 here rounds this to 10, rounds this to 10, rounds this to 19, so it's $19 sales price. So now to find the sale price, 
we have to take the original price, I'm going to say OP, and subtract the discount. And in this case, the original price was $75.99, and I have to subtract $19. And so $75.99, if you need the calculator, use it, minus $19 is $56.99. And this is a stated in words, so we should actually say, therefore, we pay $56.99. Okay, next one says, in Ontario, we pay 13% sales tax, HST. So really what we are paying is 113% of the sale price. Because we pay, we pay the price, so we pay 100%. And then the government asks us to pay 13% on top of that so that the government can pay their bills, uh, like the ones that go to funding your schools and your hospitals and things like that. Okay, so if we pay 100% and then 13%, the total amount that we pay is actually 113% of the sticker price. So how much money do we have to pay in total for an iPod that sells for $159.75? So the total price equals sticker price. When we say sticker price, it's the price on the sticker. Sticker price times 113%. Well, 113% is 1.13, so we're going to do in this case 159.75 and multiply that by 1.13. And that's going to give us the total price with taxes and everything. 159.75 times 1.13. 180.52. One 180.52. So therefore, We pay 180.52, including the taxes, and that's going to conclude this video on percent.